Your Excellency and distinguished guests, O valiant hearts who to your glory came through dust of conflict and through battle flame, tranquil you lie, your knightly virtue proved, your memory hallowed in the land you loved. This is the opening of a stirring, heart-wrenching hymn, paying tribute to those soldiers of World War I who died in battle to secure our freedom. Their sacrifices made in the atrocities and horrendous conditions of war. Sir John Arkwright uses his talents and mastery of the arts to craft a heartfelt tribute for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Just one way the arts have been used to highlight the true horrors of war for us, allowing us to empathize with the soldiers, understand why the uplifting nature of some of the music which emerged from World War I was such a necessary part of their lives. Poets such as Wilfred Owen used their art to highlight the true horrors of war. In his poem, Dolce et Decorum Est, we see the struggles these men faced, and we know that they are mirrored in those trials that our New Zealand soldiers went through. We can see the haunting flares. We can hear the gargling from froth-corrupted lungs of our New Zealand soldiers at Passchendaele and the monstrous anger of the guns on the beaches of Gallipoli. The arts are also used to highlight the scale of destruction and war. In our hymn, O Valiant Hearts, we hear the words rank on rank to war. And our minds are filled with images of row upon row of New Zealand soldiers lining Queen Street, waiting, in the words of Wilfred Owen, to die as cattle. And it is here we come to appreciate why the world needed at the same time the happiness and buoyancy that music can bring. It is October 1914 and New Zealand is preparing to lend its help to a war effort, a battle fought on foreign soils. 8,500 New Zealand soldiers line the streets of Queen Street, waiting, rank on rank. Yet there's an air of patriotism, strength, courage and bravery as the New Zealand Army Brass Band leads a parade down the streets lined with people, Cheers and shouts farewell these brave men and women, and the rousing tunes of a brass band form the soundtrack for an image which has never before been seen in our history. And it is images such as these which warm the hearts of my generation. We think back to the courage and bravery of our men and women. We think back to how our country united in the face of adversity, how oblivious of what was to come, these men and women took up arms against an unknown enemy. But what was it that stirred the hearts of the crowds and the soldiers alike? Not only the show of strength or the youthful faces, but the music an art form which has existed for longer than can be remembered, the universal language uniting a country, helping to push aside old grievances. One of the soldiers in this parade was William Fitchett, a young soldier from Otago who was prepared to give his life in defense of his country. In Sir John Arkwright's words, to save mankind, yourselves, you scorn to save. It is in William's diary we can see the war through the eyes of just an ordinary soldier. Not that ordinary can be used to describe any of these brave men and women. After their farewell from Auckland, William and his comrades travelled to Egypt, where we can only assume the gravity of their situation was starting to sink in. However, in this land far from home, they were once again greeted by music. William and his comrades drew their ship up next to the Australian troop carrier, and both groups of soldiers stood to attention as the bands of both nations played the regiment march. 
And here we can see how music has been used to unite people in a land far from home. And we know that this act of camaraderie was likely the spark which ignited the raging fire which we now know to be the Anzac spirit. These soldiers trained side by side for months and months in the harsh conditions of the Egyptian desert. And soon, as each day passed, the bond between them grew stronger and stronger. And then they believed, in William's own words, they were ready for some real action. So little did they know of the pain, suffering and loss that they would experience on the beaches of Anzac Cove. O valiant hearts, splendid you passed, the great surrender made. At 18 minutes past four, on the 25th of April, 1915, these men got a taste of the real action they had once sought. A navigation error forced our troops to land one mile north of the planned invasion site, and as such were faced by steep, precipitous cliffs lined with heavily armed and well-prepared Turkish soldiers. William tells of how he and his comrades were trapped on the beaches. Unable to advance up the cliffs with the wide expanse of the Aegean Sea to their backs, pinned down by a seemingly continuous barrage of Turkish bullets. Yet, it was here, in the face of this destruction, surrounded by the bodies of their fallen comrades, where the New Zealand soldiers did all that was possible to keep their spirits high. They began to sing. They sung upbeat songs such as It's a Long Way to Tipperary and used their happy tunes to form the backbone of their courage and bravery. To once again unite with their Australian counterparts to launch one of the hardest fought attacks of World War I, despite all the odds. Their joyous melodies drifted across the trenches, not only bringing heart to the Anzacs, but also mocking their enemies. Their courage became the source of legend. O valiant hearts, your memory hallowed in the land you loved. Since the 17th century, the end of a day has been marked by the playing of the last post to give soldiers time to reflect, to mourn comrades lost. I was just 10 years old when I first played the last post at my primary school Anzac ceremony, and I held little appreciation for why the grown-ups came to me with tears in their eyes and lumps in their throats. Now, years later, I'd like to think I have a greater appreciation of the images these haunting notes conjure in the minds of New Zealanders. It's not just one little boy playing a tune. It's the image of a shared history, of loved ones lost, victories won, and a fight for freedom which is embodied in the playing of this piece. And this is what music does. O oh, valiant hearts, your memory hallowed in the land you loved. In glorious hope, her proud and soaring land commits her children to thy gracious hand. Thank you. <laughs>